Hello everybody and welcome to Ancient Architects. Please subscribe now to get the latest ancient history news and independent research from around the world. The subject of this video is the ruins of Alakahoyuk, a settlement in the Alaka district of Churum, Turkey, which is situated around 25 kilometers northeast of the Hittite capital Hattusa. The site was first occupied in the Chalcolithic period, but really began to flourish in the Bronze Age. In this pre-Hittite phase, it was a major centre for the Hattian culture in the 3rd millennium BC, before becoming absorbed into the Hittite Empire centuries later. At the site and beneath the Hittite ruins, we find a Hattian royal necropolis. Although the focus of this video is the incredible megalithic architecture, it is actually the Bronze Age tombs and the layers below the masonry that makes this site extra special. There are seven tombs in total, discovered between 1937 and 1939, and are dated to between 2400 and 2200 BC. Experts discovered an abundance of incredible finds sitting alongside the human remains. And I'll give you a small glimpse now, but these will be the subject of a future standalone video. Above the Hattian layers is this incredible Hittite stonework, which we are told dates back to the 14th century BC. And anyone with an interest in ancient architecture really should take note, because the ruins are truly astonishing. The Hittites transformed an ancient Hattian royal necropolis into this fortified town and important cult centre. It's famously known for its monumental Sphinx Gate, the centrepiece of the elaborate southern entrance into the town, which was once fortified with large towers. Each Sphinx statue is 7 feet high and carved from a 13 foot high monolith, and they acted as protectors of the city, hence their position guarding the entrance. Here we see an artist's impression showing how it may have looked in its heyday. We can also see this famous symbol that's carved into the side of one of the sphinxes. This double-headed eagle was an ancient symbol that was adopted by the Hittites and used as royal insignia. The gateway is like a mini complex in itself, and the stone blocks leading to the Sphinx Gate are carved on their outer surfaces, and some of the decoration still survives to this day. But when you visit the site today, these are actually copies, and the original carved blocks are safely in the Museum of Anatolian Civilizations, protected from vandals, looters, and the elements. A lot of work has been done to interpret the reliefs, and we know they show the chief Hittite god Teshup, who is pretty much the same as the Greek Zeus. Teshup's struggle with Ilianka is almost identical to the story of Zeus and his struggle with Typhon. It's possible the Greek myth originated with the Hittites before being adopted and reworked by the Greeks. The reliefs also show musicians, acrobats, ancient priests on a ceremonial walk, and some of them are carrying sacrifices for the gods. We can also see the Hittite king and queen in relief. This T-shaped object is not a Gebekli Tepe T-shaped pillar as some speculate, but is actually an altar that's made from straw and where offerings were given to the bull, which was a symbol of Teshup. The reliefs are why experts believe that this was a cult site, an important temple, and the site of pilgrimage for the elite. Through the Sphinx Gate, and today we see the foundations of a large Hittite building complex, and because of its size and scale, we know it was once a very important site. The complex contains a temple, a large grain store, living quarters, an archive centre, and a storehouse of religious materials. There is also this mysterious stone tunnel that runs through the site. Experts believe the place was occupied by Hittite priests and their servants, and could well have been a place of royal pilgrimage, as a road connected the site to the capital Hattusa. It was a sacred cult site, maybe because it was an older Hattian royal necropolis. I don't know. 
as you can see in these stills that are taken from a video that's made by JJ Ainsworth of the Megalithic Maiden YouTube channel that's linked below, many of the stones actually contain post holes. This is because the structures inside would have been built from wooden beams together with mud brick and thatch, organic material that doesn't survive 3,500 years of history. Everything we've seen so far is pretty incredible stuff, but nothing compares to the size, scale and complexity of a Lacahoya's boundary wall. We can see huge megalithic blocks of stone precisely joined together in a way that's reminiscent of, or even better than what we see in places like Sacsayhuaman and Cusco in Peru. It's this incredible stonework I really want to highlight in this video. Hugh Newman of the Megalithomania channel has made a few videos on this site, which I've linked below, and these stills are taken from his videos. Just look at the joinery. The stonework is neatly and elaborately fitted together, showing clear excellence in stoneworking techniques. Have you ever seen anything as good as this? It truly is mind-boggling work. Now with any incredible stonework, there is always discussion over the dating. And because the archaeology at this site goes as back as far as 4000 BC, there is speculation that these large megalithic walls may in fact predate the Hittites. But archaeological excavations have been done, and experts have identified 14 archaeological layers at Alakahoyuk. And there is agreement among scholars that the foundations of the large megalithic boundary wall were laid in the 14th century BC work that was done by the Hittites, the time the entire building complex was constructed. Of course I'll keep an open mind, especially because we know how civilizations around the world have reused the stonework of previous cultures, and it is possible that sections of the boundary wall could well date to the Hattian period when this site was an important royal necropolis. But if it is Hittite, it does make sense they used large polygonal masonry for the settlement's boundary wall because it needed to be the strongest line of defence. It needs to be the most stable structure to be extremely difficult to break through. It needed to be earthquake resistant as well as being able to resist an outside invasion. It was worth the extra time and effort to protect one of the key sites of the Hittite Empire. The Sphinx Gateway Complex with its beautiful relief carvings was built onto the outside of the main polygonal boundary wall as seen on satellite pictures on Google Earth. We can see the gateway extends outwards and this would have offered a grand welcoming for royal visitors to Alakahoyuk. With regards to this site, there is a great deal more I could talk about but today, I really just wanted to introduce it, to highlight yet another masterpiece of the ancient architects of history. Thank you very much for watching this episode of Ancient Architects. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, please like the video, and please leave a comment below. Thank you very much.